Hey, this is Corey Glenn, and I'm going to show in this video how I go about making a bone reduction guide, a drilling guide, and then a indexed prosthesis. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach these cases, so I'm going to just show you one method and uh, hopefully give you some ideas along the way of how you can perhaps approach different ways. So I'm starting this case from the point of having already planned the implants. I've already uh, imported the denture. That was just done as a traditional dual scan technique. I've shown that elsewhere in my videos. And so all that's been done to this point is we've imported that scan appliance. That was an ideal denture that the patient had. They were cone beam scanned wearing that denture with radiographic markers and then that radiographic, or I'm sorry, that denture was scanned by itself with the radiographic markers. Blue Sky Plan converts that denture into STL, it pulls it into position, and that's how we were able to plan the prosthetic position. In this case, there's going to be four implants. The two distal are uh, distoangulated to improve the AP spread, and we've uprighted those with 30 degree uh, angled custom abutments. And uh, what I've chosen to do on these is to make them, uh, let's see, what was the, the diameter? The diameter of that abutment is five, di five millimeters in uh, diameter. And five millimeters, that's gonna be a, a really nice size to do a pickup hole. And you'll see how we use those in a moment to create pickup holes in the prosthetic. So let's start by going ahead and making the bone reduction guide. Now, first of all, how do we know that we need a bone reduction guide? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it, but one very simple one is to simply look at the implants and measure backwards uh, the necessary prosthetic space. Now, this is uh, what determines where you put the head of your implant. So if I say that I need uh, 18 millimeters from the incisal edge down to the head of the implant uh, for my implant, then, or I'm sorry, for the prosthesis to have the uh, correct bulk of uh, material, then I can measure with the measuring tool from the occlusal surface back 18 millimeters, and that more or less tells me where the head of that implant needs to be. If that happens to be, in this case like it is, about five, six millimeters subcrestal, well then that tells me that I have some bone reduction that's gonna be required in order to do this case. So I'm gonna turn off for a moment the denture Let's turn the visible check mark off, and I'm going to maximize this to full screen. The implants have been locked, and typically when we make a surgical guide, you would turn on guide tubes. I'm going, going to go ahead and make a surgical guide, though, without the guide tubes turned on. So what I've done is go to guide fabrication. I'm going to do mandible, and I'm going to do lock implants, use automatic brush, normal quality. On the thickness of this, this is going to end up becoming the bone reduction guide, and it's been my experience that when those are really, really thick, and I feel like three millimeters is pretty thick, they tend to be very difficult to seat uh, to get under the flaps. And so I'm gonna scale this back to about 1.8 millimeters. Um, I'm gonna not remove undercuts. I prefer to print the mandible at the end of the case and hand adjust this in. I like to create a nice snap fit so that I'm not having that thing come unseated throughout the whole procedure. So we're going to go with a 1.8 thickness uh, guide, and now I'm ready to draw the curve of the guide. Now you'll notice this is way beyond uh, where you would typically want a guide to seat. In fact, it's going to be going over the mental frame in here. Don't worry about that. That's being done by design because I really do like to hand adjust this uh, in at the end to make sure that uh, we have adequate bulk and everything. So I'll go in and I'll bring these contours up and over the mental foramen. I'll reduce them where necessary. So now I go to edit curve. And once again, I'm just trying to make sure that this is pretty well overextended. Okay, you'll see why that is in a moment because we, when we go to make the cuts in this, uh, there's a tendency to make this too skinny in dimension in some places. So having this a little overextended from the start aids in, in helping to avoid that problem. So that looks good. You can see I'm going about halfway down the distance uh, or the height of the implant. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and create a surgical guide. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so now the software has created a, we'll call it a guide, but really it's just a tray sitting over the bone. And we're going to exploit that to create a uh, bone reduction guide now. So first thing I need to do is go to my surfaces panel, click on that surgical guide, and let's turn the transparency up. I need to be able to see those, those implants through the guide. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to zoom in on this and now I can turn on the surgical guide tubes. Now I'm gonna use the fully guided surgical kit in this case, and so we can visualize where those tubes are positioned. This could just as well be any other implant system or kit on the market, uh, but you need to visualize where those tubes are going to be. Now back to the surfaces panel, I'm going to make a cut, but I'm gonna use the cut all function here. The reason I'm doing that, and this is active now, is because I wanna come in and I wanna take a cut out of both the jawbone and out of this uh, guide that I just created. I want to make that cut simultaneously through both surfaces. All right, there's the first cut. And as you can see, what that did is create a uniform amount of reduction and it lined both of those up to the exact same parameters of where that cut is going to be. Now I'm going to look at it always from the lingual because this tool cuts indefinitely anything that's behind it. Once again, cut all. And this time, take out that side. And finally, we can do the last implant. So notice how I'm always cutting parallel to these cuts that have already been made. You don't want these going in multiple different planes. Okay, the bone reduction guide has been completed. Uh, now if I was to turn the transparency back down, you'll be able to clearly see that now we have a representation of what the, the reduction guide is going to look like, and we also have a representation of what the jaw is going to look like once that reduction has been done. Now, there's many different ways. Many people have shown stackable guides. You could most certainly make a stackable guide that uh, you know serves as your surgical guide and indexes onto this. There's some patent issues concerning that, so I'm not going to show that. Rather, what I would advocate doing is to now go back and just build a secondary separate surgical guide that seats on the jaw. So once you've done your, your jaw reduction, and you need to do that carefully and uh, very accurately, now you can simply go back and make a second surgical guide, this time with the tubes turned on. So I'll go back to guide panel. We're building the surgical guide on the mandible. All the same things are checked here. Let's see if we can edit curve. Uh, so it, no, it looks like it erases my curve since I cut on the mandible. I'm going to just do the exact same thing. I'm not taking a lot of care in underextending my borders right now. I'm going to kind of go overboard with the extension and then grind that in by hand after this has been 3D printed. Edit the curve and now we'll create the drilling guide for the surgery. <clears throat> okay so now we have two different guides we have a bone reduction guide and now we have the drilling guide you can see it, it does a little something funky here to create space to get your drill in there since these are coming in at an angle and once again we're not going to leave this overextended we will trim this back uh, I like to do that once I have um, printed out the final guides, printed out the mandible, and I hand adjust that in to the anatomical boundaries that I need to. So we've got our reduction guide, our drilling guide. The only thing left at this point is that we should make a interim prosthesis. Now one of the most time consuming parts of these very large cases can be doing the conversion of let's say a denture over to uh, making it your interim restoration. One of the beautiful things about 3D printing is that we can go ahead and design and print that on the front end. And most certainly you could maybe even just take their, uh, their original denture, this one right here. 
you could just 3D print this and subtract out those holes and at least you'd be that much further ahead in uh, doing your pickup. But you'd still have to, to really redesign the whole underside of this denture. You would have to um, you know, cut the borders way back. I think it would be even better if we could uh, go ahead and do a lot of that work on the front end. So that's what we're gonna do. I have the surgical guide. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, I know where the guide tubes are right now, and I know what the shape of this mandible is going to be. Now, in an ideal world, I would say that I'd like to have about two millimeters of space between the bottom of a hybrid prosthesis and the jaw bone, and that's going to be uh, where the tissue resides. It's going to get packed with PRF. Uh, that's going to give a really nice tissue bed. Any closer than that, you're going to notice red tissue that is not healing up well. Any more than that, you're going to end up with a high water design. So I find in the realm of two to three millimeters tends to be ideal. So how do I create that spacer? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the guide tubes once again. And very similar to what we did earlier, I'm going to go in and I'm going to just make a surgical guide on the mandible again, but this time in this form. All right, so let's go to guide panel, building this on the jaw. How much of a spacer do we want? Well, I mentioned we want to have about two millimeters. Let's go two and a half just for the demonstration. Okay, so I've got a two and a half millimeter distance and we're going to now draw the curve. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to create a surface to then go and build a denture on. Okay, so what I'm gonna have is a uniform two and a half millimeter spacer over the top of this jaw. So let's create that and then I'll show you how we use it. All right, as you see, I have a uniform thickness uh, guide, we'll call it, but what it's providing me is a uniform surface that I can now build a denture on. So I'm gonna go now and switch to the denture mode. And now we've opened the denture mode and you can see that I have my jaw, I have this red surface, which is a two and a half th uh, millimeter thick guide. Now, where do I need to build these teeth to? Well, what I'm gonna do, because this was done correctly in the diagnostic phase and an ideal denture was used for imaging purposes, I know where the teeth belong. And so I'm going to turn this on and off and reference it when placing my teeth. So now I'm gonna come up, add teeth. There's, num there's a number of uh, libraries that you can use. I'm gonna use for most of my hybrids, this Dave Vige library, because Dave, like myself, had his uh, lower premolars removed. And so that enables us to do somewhat of a shortened dental arch. So I'm gonna select all the mandibular teeth. I'm gonna eliminate the second molar. So control, click those. And now let's add these selected teeth as a chain and I can shift and drop those into the case. All right, you see the teeth now in position. These teeth can be scaled. They can be moved in any way that we want to move them. I'm gonna move them back and just try to roughly line them up with the occlusal surface of this current denture. And again, I can do this because of the way the imaging was done at the start of the case. If you did not do this, and let's suppose that you used a denture that really is in a non-ideal position, you will have to approach this slightly differently, uh, but it can still very easily be done. So I'm positioning the incisors. I want them at the exact same position. I also want them at the exact same height. And that looks like we've got it there. Okay, so now I can see that the remainder of these teeth, even though I've got the front incisors in the right position, are not lining up. So let's go to denture panel. Let's show and hide the tooth chain. And in doing that, I'm gonna lock each of the incisors, okay? Now I can hold down the shift and click on this button. I can bring the entire chain of teeth up, just almost like swinging a barn door. When I like the next tooth, I lock it. And then I can click and bring these up. That canine now looks like it's in the right position. And then that molar went a little too far, so I'm gonna bring it down slightly. So hopefully you would agree with me, even though we're not lining up cusp for cusp, which you certainly could do, 
um, we do have these roughly in the same position. Furthermore, we could now look and make sure that our cusp tips are lining up. So I want these buckle cusps lining up in the exact same position. So that looks good on the other side. It looks like it might be slightly off. So first thing I want to do is raise up the incisal position. And now we can also grab these and line up the cusp. That really seems like that did most of the job right there. Uh, we could maybe bring this molar up slightly and right there we have it. So our tooth setup has been done in mere moments. Now I could go back and turn the denture off and this is my tooth setup. So let's proceed now. Let's design a denture and which surface do we want to build this denture on? I want to build this on the surgical guide surface, uh, the red one, because that's the one that's creating my spacer. So we'll tell it this is a mandible. I'm going to create the denture now. And the first thing it asks me to do is to identify the undercut position. Uh, we'll just identify an insertion position like you normally would with the lower denture. And let's don't allow undercuts. Let's just eliminate the undercuts here and now I can click next. It's going to ask me to um, now identify the borders. So now on the working model, which has had a lot of the undercuts removed, I can begin holding shift and clicking my way around. I'm not doing flanges. Remember, part of the goal here is to eliminate all the uh, grinding that we'd have to do on a conventional denture. So most of the flanges are going to be removed and only require a little bit of cleaning up at the end of this process. All right, so drag that last node into your first node or it won't let you proceed. That looks good. Let's go to next. And the software has now created just a minimal thickness base. Now it's asking me where do I want to build additional gingiva up to. So I'm going to identify a plane that roughly passes through the contact points. And this is not a super important step. Just click next and then you'll have to identify a second curve. This is something that's uh, going to be eliminated because it is a bit redundant. But for right now, if you're using this version of the software, all you need to do is just go around your perimeter again identify that second curve, bring it up and over, drag your last point into the first and next. So you can see now that additional gingiva has been built up and now I can use the festooning tools. And so the ones that I use most are the local deform. The local deform tool allows me to scale a spot size and then drag this gingiva out, upward, really whatever I want to do. So it's a very fast tool to use. And all I'm trying to do is cover the, the necks of the teeth. I'm not going to really go overboard with trying to cover a lot of the tooth because in the end, what I'm going to prefer to do is to print this as a monolithic piece in one material, and that's going to be a white material. And then I would prefer to have a little space or a little cutback, you might say, to come back and apply gingival composite right here. Okay, so on the facial, that's really about all that I want to do. On the lingual, I can really afford to go quite a bit thicker here. Okay, remember your lingual, we probably want to have some additional material uh, just for bulk and for strength. So I'm going to make this pretty thick. This area right here can definitely be thickened up. And again, I'm not I'm not being overly careful to make sure that this is pristine looking because this is going to be a conversion prosthesis. This is going to get shaped outside of the mouth once the procedure or once the pickup has been done. So smooth tool, if things start getting a little rough for your liking, you can turn the strength up and make it work a little bit faster. Let's smooth on the facial surface as well. And then local deform to pull up a little bit more material in some of these areas. That's looking good. You can see very minimal uh, cantilever because usually if you're using a printed prosthesis, the place it's going to break is at your cantilever. So if you've got a really long cantilever, you might want to reconsider using just a purely printed um, material and maybe putting some kind of a reinforcement in that, whether that is um, trilor arch bar material, just a little piece of metal. Uh, whatever you really choose. So 
that's it for the festooning. Now we could go ahead with the process here, but essentially I'm done with everything I need to do. I'm not doing this like a conventional denture where I want to make the sockets and everything. I've really done what I need to at this point. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and export this. So export data. I'm going to name this denture base uh, is checked on and all of the teeth are checked on as you can see right here. I want to export those simultaneously so they create one surface. I'm going to export this and call it hybrid denture initial because I will make some modifications on this. Click OK and if I turn off this model I think you'll see uh, the purpose of what I've been doing all along here by building it on that model which was a uniform thickness off the bone you can see that has by default created tissue space here and minimal uh, extensions that we'll have to grind off for smoothing this and making it ovate so I've got a nearly finished prosthetic the only thing that I would like to do from here is maybe go back to surgical guide mode so we're in surgical guide and I need to make the pickup holes in that prosthetic so remember how I made these uh, abutments? These are just custom abutments on the implants. They're 20 millimeters long, which allows them to be long enough to protrude up through the surface. They're five millimeters in diameter. That's a good size for a pickup hole. So what I'm also going to do now is export all of those abutments. So turn off everything except for the abutments. This stands for export implants, abutments, guide tubes. We just want the implants, no teeth, This is all four abutments. I'll save that. And we'll come back to why I do this in a moment. But if you remember that we created a reduction guide earlier, I'm going to export that right now. Oops, wrong button. Let's export and not import. So that green surgical guide right here, that was our bone reduction guide. Okay, let's now open that folder that contains those files. I have my hybrid denture initial. I'm going to open that now in Mesh Mixer. This is really the only portion of the process where you should have to go outside of Blue Sky Plan, and this is a pretty advanced function. So the first thing that you're going to note is that we have our prosthesis. Uh, it's a really nice contour. It's nearly finished. If I was to go in and use the select tool though, you're going to see that this is one STL but made up of a bunch of different surfaces. Each of these teeth is a different surface. The gingival portion is a different surface. So what I want to do to this is actually just make it one solid object, one watertight object. I'm going to do that by saying make solid. Now making solid can make the, uh, the detail suffer. As you see right here, there's a lot of pixelation right in that. I'm going to change this from fast to accurate and I'm going to increase the solid accuracy and update this. So now we have a much cleaner looking um, prosthetic, but this is all one piece. I'll accept that. Now notice when I do the select tool, if I select this, it's all just one object, not individual objects. So I'll clear that. I want to import those abutments now too. So all four abutments was labeled here. One thing I found out from experience, again, you can see an STL saves the, uh, the positional uh, nature of that object, not just its shape. So these are still in the right relationship to these teeth. So one of the things I've found is that we want to do a Boolean subtraction right here. We want to subtract these abutment tubes from this surface. It's been my experience that if I do that with these uh, objects straight out of the, the software, the, the mesh is too dense. It'll cause your computer to lock up. It eats up a lot of memory. So what I'm, I've already made this one solid. What I'm also going to do is go over here to all four abutments, turn that into a solid. Now that is going to simplify the mesh. You see how it rounded out the mesh? That's desirable. That's what we want right here. So I'll accept that. And now how do we make the pickup holes? The, the steps that we just completed is going to allow us to do this all at one time. So what I do is I find my denture solid, hold down control, select my abutments solid, and now say Boolean difference. 
Now, historically, that would have taken a long time to sit there and think through. This does it immediately because we've simplified these meshes. Go ahead and uncheck auto reduce result. That will tend to make these uh, collapse back in on themselves if you leave that on. And now I'm going to accept it. So now I have a more or less finished prosthesis, but the question arises, how do you index this into position? Because we're not doing a stackable approach, so how are we gonna retain that in the right position? Well, do you remember earlier how we exported the bone reduction guide? Let's import that into Mesh Mixer. Here it is. What if we could connect these two together and then create a basically a, a one-piece object that would utilize this bone reduction portion to seat this on the mandible in the right anterior, posterior, and occlusal position. There's nothing in the way of the pickup because that's all been cleared out. If you remember, um, you know, we did the bone reduction, so that's all been cut away here on the top, and all of this remaining portion is really what serves to index it. So I'm gonna connect these two, and we can use this to do the pickup, to position it, and then once it's been picked up, we'll cut away this, this uh, um, bone reduction guide portion. So how am, I gonna, how am I gonna do this? I will go ahead and select a couple of spots. I'm gonna select spots on the uh, prosthesis, okay? So small spot size, maybe about like so. I've used a small brush size, and now I'm gonna hit T for transform. All right, you see how I drug that down and I'm gonna just drag it over until it connects. All right, that's connected now. Let's grab another portion, so clear your selection. Let's grab another little spot, T for transform. Now that's connected. So we've got two points on the facial. I think we should probably have maybe a couple of points back here in the very back. So clear the selection again. Select. T for transform. And you can see that's causing a problem right there. So let me cancel that. And what I need to do is maybe select a portion that's a little further up on the inside of this. All right, so let's go right there. Because what I was trying to do there is drag mesh through itself. That will throw you some errors if you do that. Okay, so that's connected now. Uh, we don't want this to be on the inside, and it looks like it is clear of that. But obviously, if it was on the inside, that's going to create problems uh, with this having the ability to seat. And let's do one more now. Select, T for transform. and now we're all connected. So I refer to these as sacrificial supports. As you can see, this is going to now become all one object. When I print it, it maintains this position and space of the hybrid, and then once it's been picked up, now we take it out of the mouth, we cut these little supports away, and we have minimal finishing to do on the underside of this, basically a little flowable to connect it all. So last step before doing that is to connect these two objects together. So control select both of them and this time let's combine. And I'm going to call that, we'll export it and call it indexed hybrid. So back to Blue Sky Plan, let's open up our case. I'm going to import that STL just so you can look at it. Indexed hybrid. It will default to ask you to stitch. You don't need to stitch this. It's in the right position already. Already, So I'm gonna turn off all the implants, all of the nerves, all the teeth, and you can now see what this object looks like. Once again, once it's printed, I'll trim these borders up to make sure they're not impinging on anatomy. But this is the final indexed hybrid with pickup holes in it. So let's go through what all surfaces we have now. We have the mandible, which is somewhere there and let's start with the surgical guide for bone reduction it goes on you reduce the bone down to this level that's done now you take it out 
you put your implants in and this guide fits perfectly on the now reduced jaw and finally you put your multi-unit abutments on you put your hybrid on with the cylinders protruding through here and it makes for a super quick easy and accurate pickup as soon as the material hardens and your cylinders are, are in position you can now take this out of the mouth cut these sacrificial supports smooth up the underside do any amount of finishing you want and you're done so it's a pretty simple workflow not that technical there are a few little technical steps but uh, comparatively speaking this is a really expedited workflow from what many of the the options out there are currently so i hope you found that useful um, i know there's a zillion different ways that you can improve upon it and modify it but hopefully this gives you a start